flow. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit flow. Amen. Well, I'm so glad you came tonight. I want you to know that um, uh, we will be operating a little bit differently. I told Jason that he had complete um, authority that while I'm teaching, to flow with me teaching, and if he has something to add, just come right on up here and add with it. We'll work together. We'll flow together. Amen? Amen. And so um, I give you a little bit of, I just want you all to know that so many times in our realm of healing or whatever realm we're searching, we feel like we have to really have it to get it. Amen? But I remember a day, this is just our story, Pat and I's story, I remember a day when, um, how many of you, how many of you know what bubblegum medicine is? If you got kids, you probably know what bubblegum medicine is. Bubblegum medicine is your safety net. It is the all-encompassing drug if something happens to your children, they start getting the sniffles, you give them the bubblegum medicine. Two wonderful things. It clears them up right quick. And the second wonderful thing is, is that they, um, they like it. So they'll take it. You know, you don't have to fight with them to get it. And I'm out preaching and get God's starting to give me revelation that, 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 that I'd connected with the ministry and and my pastor had had me out just preaching everywhere, and Pat was right there with me, and 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 I'm teaching a um, a college and career class and young married class on Wednesday night, and I'm teaching on healing, you know, and I got such a revelation. I'm laying on I'm laying hands on people, and they're getting healed, and so I'm just this is awesome stuff. And one day I come home. And I opened up the refrigerator to get something. Pat told me to get something. And I opened up the refrigerator. And when I did, immediately, you know, wives, when you tell your husband to get something in the refrigerator, if it's not jumping out at him, he doesn't see it, right? Right, okay, okay. But my peripheral kicked in immediately. And the bubble gum medicine was missing. Two bottles, one for each child, is gone. And in panic, I quickly wheeled, wheeled around and said, Honey, where's the bubblegum medicine? And she said, Who it away? You did what? She said, I threw it away. Why? Why would you do that? She says, You're preaching it, you're teaching it, I got it. And we're going to live in health in this house. So I threw it away. And I'm thinking, I gotta start living what I preach. I gotta get a hold of this myself. Because I'm real nervous right now because what happens if one of those kids gets sick? And the pastor's just saying, no. and you know from that day forward. Now I'm not saying our kids didn't didn't catch a cold or something, but from I mean before that day, our children were sick all the time. Hence, full bottles of bubblegum medicine all the time. From that day forward, she stepped out into what we were preaching and she walked in it. And our house became whole. And the sickness and all of that was gone. And I said all that to say this, just because you know doesn't mean that you're walking in it. It's not until there's no safety net left. Amen? Amen. I, I'm telling you. And, and we've got to voluntarily take the safety net out. Pat voluntarily took the safety net out and decided, we're going to walk in this and we're going to live in this. Now, did we have everything we have today? No. We've got so much more today. But will I have everything? Will, will I have more tomorrow? I certainly am seeking for that. So what I want you to know is we're all growing together tonight. 
Amen? Amen. Praise God. All right. I want to start this out with this right here. And uh, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Did I kick that? I must have kicked that. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not, not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Listen. Healing is always a, a um, reactive work. Health is a proactive work. Okay? Healing is a reactive work. When you need healing, and every, healing is in every individual, the difference between you and the world is Jesus Christ. And he has come, and the glory of his excellency is now inside of you. Healing is in every individual. Anybody who's a non-believer cuts his finger two or three days, it's healing up. Because healing is working. It's what God put in us from the very beginning. So no one can convince me, because sin came... And sin brought a, 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 a minim, it minimized what could happen inside the individual. It, that the, 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 the human, human became separated from God. But when Christ came, he took that separation and brought us back to a relationship. And everything that was in Christ is now inside of us. He said, as he has sent me, so now I send you. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives inside of you. Yes. Every, you. Everything that Christ had, that's why he said greater things will you do than when I go to my Father than I have done. Why? Because the same spirit will be inside of you and there will not just be one of me walking around. There will be millions of me walking around. So the excellency of the power of the glory of God is in you. And that's why you have the power to heal faster. You have the power inside of you to live whole. Whew. Hallelujah. I mean, that's enough right there to just start clapping. Amen? That's, he died to give us that. So tonight I'm not here to convince you of healing because you're a, you're a part of... Of a, of, a, of a special kind who already believes in healing. But you've got to believe that it is in you. It's not just for you. It's already in you. Hmm. Hmm. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shock you, but I mean, probably won't shock you. But, you know, where I come from. Um, we're not afraid of laying hands on people. So I'm going to give you a little something here before we get there. How many came looking for healing tonight? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's already working in you right now. We're going to release it. Amen. We're going to release it. When 
I say we, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about me and Jason are going to release it. I'm talking about we're going to release it. We're, all, we're going to release it. We are going to release it. We, you, are going to release it. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Watch what he says here in, um, in Matthew 4, 24. He says, and, and, and his fame went throughout all of Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases, torments, those who were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. Okay? What I want you to understand is healing is not just most healings, especially people that are struggling with healing. I know a man, um, listen to his testimony, he was called out to a place where a lady was dying. And she was laid out on the table when they got there, laid out on the bed. And there were several ministers that came because she had been to several churches, so they just called every going fin that she had been a part of to pray for her. And when he got there, um, she was laid out, and, and she, her belly was swelled out. She had a tumor, and she was dying of cancer. And she was, I mean, she was on death, <coughs> death throes at that point. And they just were calling people in to basically say prayer and say goodbye. And he said, when I walked in there, he said, I started weeping, uncontrollably weeping. And as I wept, I felt grief like I'd never felt before. And I didn't even know this lady that well. I thought, well, I'm, I, you know, I mean, I'm sorry she's dying, but I mean, I'm just not that close. I'm just, I'm not, what is going on? And God spoke to him very quickly and said, what you are feeling is the seed of grief and the seed of sorrow, and it's all brought on by an offense. And it's grown a bitter root inside of her, and what's killing her is, is a broken heart over an offense. And I want you to lay over her, and I want you to heal that. And he laid over her, prayed over her, and she and, and he and he started speaking to her. You must forgive. You've got to let this go. See, he said he didn't just heal them of a sickness; he healed them of many things. See. And so what I want you to know is you not only have the glory inside of you of healing, but you have within you a gift. That's why you need the Holy Spirit, so he can unwrap that gift and release the gift of discernment. Because when we're praying for someone, we need to know what God has to say about it. Because everybody had prayed for this woman. And nothing happened. But when the revelation of what the root of the situation was, she was healed instantly. Man. See, results. A lot of times we walk away and not having results and we question why. I've questioned why. I've heard Jason say, you know, well, I'm going to keep praying because I don't get them all, but I'm going to keep doing it until I get them all. I love that statement. I think the Holy Spirit has a way to get them all. Amen? So watch this. He says, now when, now let's go to Luke 4, 40. He says, now when the sun was setting, all that day, all they, all they that had any sick and diverse diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. How many here want to have the courage, well, I won't even ask, who has a struggle with the courage of laying hands on someone to pray for them? You know, when you're new in this, sometimes when you've sat on the pew for a long time, you, I, I, you know what? <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, it hits, it hits me also. I, you know, there's times when I, you know, I just don't have that, the courage I wish I had every single time. But I believe God.
God wants to bring that courage. He wants to light that courage on the inside of each of us. That we have no hesitation to lay hands on the sick knowing. See, what we have to, remember transforming your mind? You've got to transform your mind that you just don't, you're not just saved and now you're going to heaven. But on the inside of you is a glory. He has glorified you. The, we he sing songs all the time. We hear all the time. And, and, and I remember sitting on the front pew one time. We had a special guest speaker. And he just kept saying, give God glory. Give God glory. And I kept thinking. At one point I thought, I don't know how to do that. And I'm, I pastor here and I don't know how to do that. <laughs> you know? How, how do you do that? I don't, I don't understand. And, and, and God said, well, you can't give me anything that I haven't already given you. And you struggle in your mind that I have glorified you. Oh, you're right. I sure do struggle. I'm struggling with that. You're talking to me right now. I'm struggling with that. You mean you have glorified? I'm not glorified. Are you kidding me? I see me in the mirror every day. I am not glorified. Oh, yes you are, and you're going to have to wrap your mind around that because you can't glorify me till you understand that you're being glorified. Now, I need you to glorify me. Matter of fact, I demand it. You can't do it till you wrap your head around that I have already glorified you. Oh, wow. Because, see, being glorified gives us something to release. <coughs> Hello? Mm. We are these earthen vessels filled with his glory that he has glorified us with. And we have the power to lay hands on someone and release. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. See, sometimes I have to stop looking at me and I have to stop looking at, we all have to, you know, I'm, I'm not there yet. I don't, it's not automatic for me. I have to stop and wrap my head around stuff before I go forward, still. Okay? Sometimes that's why you see me linger in the office sometimes because I'm trying to wrap my head around where God's taken us today. You see? And that's okay if you have to pause for a minute and rewrap your head around. I'm going to show you how I get my healing. That's what I do every time I get my healing. Watch this. He says, he says in Luke 6, 19, And the whole multitude sought to be touch him, for there went, went virtue. The whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. Mm -hmm. I've been to meetings where people tried to steal the handkerchiefs. Steal the throw towels. You know, the throw covers. You know, people go out in the, in the spirit. And they, they throw, they go there and try to take them. At the old building, we've had services that people was trying to take them. Because they recognized, all they were recognizing was God's presence. And they related it to that, that thing. So they were See, they were, they were trying to touch him. They just wanted to touch him because virtue went out of him. And we go, well, you know, I think that's a little weird. Let me tell you something. If we get to the place where they were in the New Testament, where Peter's shadows, they're going to want to touch you. Do you hear me? Don't worry. You won't get all egotistical about that. What you're going to want is try to hide from everybody, trying to get away from everybody, and they're going to be chasing you down. See? See, that's the army we have to raise up here in Southern Illinois. An army that people are wanting to get next to you and touch you because there's healing inside of you. And once we can sit, get that conveyed to them, you cannot give what you do not have, and the greatest, in, the, the greatest, the greatest, um, um, the proof of your ownership is the ability to give it away. 
And once you realize you have this in your earthen vessel and wrap your head around it, to, to go to the point of, of, of purposely releasing that glory, amen? <clears throat> now you can teach them, lead them to Christ. And, and listen, healing is one of the greatest ways to lead somebody to Christ. Jesus healed, everybody Jesus healed, none of them were saved. He hadn't died on the cross yet. Did they believe in him? Yeah, but Satan believes in him. You see? And, and healing is one of the most powerful ways to get someone to turn their heart to Christ. So let me ask you this question. How many of you, and I came from old school, how many of you would like to, 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 to know how to lay hands on someone and pray for them? Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are in the right place. Oh, you two already know. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. And I saw your hand. And it's growing. Annie, I'm telling you, Annie is growing. You better watch out. Annie is growing. Hallelujah. Folks, I was telling somebody today, I had a pastor, when he first, when, when, when he started seeing the gifts flowing in me, and he knew I was called, and before he had started putting me out there preaching everywhere, we were in an altar service one time, big crowd that day, big crowd. I, I, I started out in a big church, and, and he called me up there, we had a prayer line going, he believed in prayer lines. And he had a prayer line going, and this lady needed healing, and it was one of his members, somebody he's attached to. He looked at me and said, come here, man. It's in your hands. Lay hands on it. Pray for it. And he showed me how to do that and walked me through that, and we went right down the prayer line, and I prayed for every other one of them until I got it, until I had the courage to do that. And you know what? We don't have that in church anymore. That bothers me. That, 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 and I'll tell you what's happening is, is, is we're, not, we're not using our altars anymore. We're not operating in that anymore. And you know what? It's time to get back to that. We need to get, we need to get comfortable with praying for people. We need to get real comfortable laying hands on people. And we're laying hands not because we're superior to someone else. We're laying hands practicing, releasing the glory of God that's in us. Because I may catch a fever and I need the glory in you released on me. Yeah. Amen. I realized we needed this real bad when we were younger and, and, and I got sick and I asked Pat to pray for me and she was just so uncomfortable about that. She would have never said it, but you could just tell by the, her mannerisms. It was like, the, you're the man of God and I got to pray for you. And I'm going... Come on, baby. <laughs> you know? I don't believe tonight we have anyone here that doesn't have the desire. It's just having the will. You got the will. It's just having the understanding, knowledge, and confidence. Amen? Amen. Because I'm telling you, I, 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 Jason and I have talked. It's all about raising up an army. Hallelujah. I had one man prophesy over me. He said, the day will come in your ministry. All you will, you will be the traffic, traffic cop. And I guarantee you, he likes this idea too. He said, all you need is a whistle and point people in that direction, in that direction, just traffic cop in the service. Because God will be pouring out on everybody and people will be raised up and they'll be praying for people and all you'll have to do is just sit back and watch it. I'd just love to see that day come. Amen. All right, all right. Here, here. Let's go, let's look at this and go to go with me to Luke. Uh, did I read? All right, no. Go. And Luke six nineteen. He says, "And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went went virtue out of him and healed them all." Now let's go to this one right here. And uh, John uh, three fourteen through eighteen says, "And and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness." Even so, must the Son of Man be lifted up. Can I say something here without offending any minister, offending any of us? One day I was complaining to God that my church wasn't growing. 
and that he wasn't fulfilling the promises that he was showing me and I just didn't understand and, and what's wrong. And he said, he said, you believe a lie and that's why it's not growing. And I said, well, why do I believe? He said, you believe that people don't want this. I said, well, apparently, he said, see there, it's confirmed in you that you believe that you've ran people off, that people, that they, they don't want this, they don't want, he says, he says, the, he says, I said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. Everybody wants me, son. <laughs> he says, you believe the lie because you have got involved in lifting up something that wasn't me thinking it was me and therefore thinking it was me nobody wants it so now you relate that to nobody wants me and Bubba I'm telling you everybody wants me everybody needs me everybody wants me and everybody's going to meet me I thought wow okay He's true, everything else, see? So I want you to know what you possess inside of you, everybody wants. Say it with me, everybody, everybody. wants it. Everybody, everybody. needs it. Needs it. Everybody, everybody is hungry for it. I got it, and everybody wants it. <laughs> now I see that puts you in a whole different frame of mind. Amen. I got it. Come on, I got it. I got it. And everybody wants, it. everybody wants it. Even the non-believer wants it. Yeah. And the minute they don't want it, the doctors are going to go broke. They're all wanting healing. Pharmacists will go bankrupt the moment they don't want it anymore. They want it. And you got it. Hallelujah. Watch this. If the Son be lifted up, that whosoever believeth, that, or the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now listen to me. The only reason God will heal, the only reason, there's only one reason he will heal, only one, and that is because he so loved. Now, that opens the door that he will heal anyone and everyone. Well, they're cantankerous. They're pretty, I mean, they're rotten. They're caught up in pornography. They're, they're lesbians. They're homosexuals. They're, 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 they're wrong. They've been divorced 15 times. They can't. You, you, no. If God loves them, he wants to heal them. And once they taste his healing, they want more. Quit looking at the vessel and start looking to Jesus. Lift him up. Lift him up above it all and get his opinion on this human. And it will always be, I want them. I don't care how dirty they are. I don't care what they look like. I don't know what, I don't care what position they're in. I want them. They're mine. I created them in their mother's womb. I have a plan for them. I have a destiny for them. Don't look at what they're doing. That is not my destiny. You look at me because I'm the author and the finisher of this. Amen? So the only reason, the only reason he will heal is because he loves. And because he loves, he will heal them all. Amen? Hallelujah. All right. Because that's where I was going to and I already used it. Here in his love, Listen, not that we loved him, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of our sin. Not that we loved him, but that he 
loved us. When he was on the cross, the payment was made. Did you know on the cross when he said it was finished, it was, it was nearly, nearly three days before that, two days before that, that, that the payment for healing was already made? He took the beatings first. By his stripes were healed. Not by the cross, but by his stripes we were healed. If he never did anything else, we would still be healed. But he did more than that. He died so this glory could be deposited in our earthen. He says earthen because earthen is imperfect. Ask any of you ladies. It's one thing to get a, a, a ceramic pot. It's one thing to get a glass pot. But when you get a, when you get a clay pot, it's not perfect. It doesn't matter what manufacturer made it. It's just not perfect. Because it's, it's dirt. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. But he chose to put his glory in imperfection. It's through, his, it's through our weakness he's made strong. It's through our imperfection he's made perfect. He said, I choose the weaker things to confound the, confound the wise. Amen. <coughs> so guess what? Look at your hands. Just look at your hands for a minute. I know. It made me uncomfortable the first time somebody told me to do this too. Say it with me. There's healing in these hands. Say it with me again. There's healing in these hands. In these hands. Hallelujah. Lisa, you going to get that piano? Praise God. Now we're going to take our time and we're going to pray for those who came to be prayed for. You got anything? You got anything? I want you to just come on up here, brother. How about now? Thank you. I, I just want to piggyback on one little thought that you said something about even an unbeliever when he cuts his finger, his own body over time will heal itself, right? We don't have trouble believing that. Well, one thing you taught me about now that we've been restored, we've been redeemed, we're now uh, made back into the sons of God, put, put back in our place. And we've, you've all heard us teach about dominion. You have dominion over the creation. We've been put back in that place, right? Time is a part of the creation. Right? Time is a part of the creation. And since we've been put back in our place of having dominion over the creation and we're, we're the sons now operating and ruling in charge and having a, a authority over the creation, therefore, doesn't that mean we have dominion over time? So, so if you break your arm and the doctor says six weeks till it gets healed, if you're now a son and restored back to that, you now have dominion and authority over time to reach through and pull that healing back into Amen. You got authority to override time where it took three days for the cut to heal. Be healed right now. Take six weeks for the broken bone to heal. You override time, pull that thing into the future because you have dominion over time. Mm, that's good. You, you have that in you. As, as sons and sons, I say sons, even though it's not gender. Even you girls, are your sons, all right? It's not a gender thing. We're, we're sons of God, redeemed back to the place that we were originally created to live before sin ever entered the world. We can operate now as if sin never existed. Jesus came to demonstrate to us how a man could operate in the earth without sin on his record. And then said, here, I've come to demonstrate it. Now you go live in the same thing that I have. 
same spirit that rose Jesus up out of the grave now dwells inside of us. Jesus was a son of God with no sin on his record that had fellowship with the Father. Guess what we are? <laughs> exactly the same thing. We're exactly the same. Now that's not, I know, some of you wiggle, but if one, if one seed goes to the ground and dies, you're exactly the same. We're exactly the same. We just need to know and understand it, that we've been put back in the place where what we say goes. And we can pull six weeks back into now because we have dominion of time. Amen. And our bodies are designed all by their self to be healed. All by their self. They're designed to be healed and to fix themselves. Now we can make it. Right now. Right now. You go. All of us. That's awesome. Amen. I want some of that. Amen. All right. Amen. Would you start playing? Just, just, just softly play some music. Hallelujah. Those of you who are needing healing tonight, what we're going to do tonight, we're just going to pray for some people. Next week, we're going to take out some time with those of you who raised your hands. It's time for you to start praying for some people. Amen? It's time for you to start praying for some people. It's time for you to get your hands out there and lay hands on them. We're going to be right there with you. Amen? We're going to be right there with you. You're going to see the power of God flow through you. You going to get expecting for that next week? Huh? You going to get fired up? You going to think about that next this week? And next week I'm going. And next week I'm going to lay hands on somebody. And I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to get that opportunity to lay hands on on somebody. And 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 you know what? If 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 nobody's sick next week, we'll just we'll just lay hands on people for health. We'll get proactive on this thing. Amen? Hallelujah. Because the same glory in you to produce healing is the same glory in you to produce health. Amen? All right. So if you are one of those who raised your hands earlier in the service, I want you to come on up here. Take that walk on down here. Amen? And we're going to pray for you. No one goes home unsatisfied prayed for somebody not long ago and two weeks later uh, he, he called me and said I got my healing praise God so here's, here's, here's the thing you're getting it amen you're getting it how you want to do this you want to work on one end me on the other how you want to do it I don't care you don't care hallelujah amen hallelujah I'll just say this one thing right quick because I saw that uh, when Paul was listing gifts of the Spirit, he, he listed gift of miracle, gifts of miracles, and he listed gifts of healings. Two separate things. And, and sometimes I think we're tricked as, as like tonight, we're going to release healing. This, I love miracles. Well, I want a miracle. I love to see everybody here right now. That's what I go for. That's what I want. That's a miracle. But he differ differentiated between the two because just because you don't automatically see wham, big time miracle, which I'm going for that. I love that. That's what we go. Doesn't mean that the gift of healing has not been released and it's working. Amen. So even if you don't see your arm grow out immediately, don't go home discouraged and saying that the gift of healing has not been released and healing's working in my body because just because I didn't see right now miracle, see it's two separate it's two separate gifts. If there was all the miracle or none, there wouldn't have been two different you follow me? Amen. So we're just gonna believe that the thing's released tonight and if you get it immediately, great. If you don't, so what? It's still released and it's still going to work. I've seen it a lot on the third day. And I don't know if that has something to do with the resurrection or, or what, but I've seen people get prayed for and nothing happened immediately. And on the third day, they wake up healed. So we're just going to believe it's working. Amen. Just going to believe it's working. 
It's working the moment we lay hands on you. you I'm telling you, and it's going to work. It works the moment you lay hands on someone. Hallelujah. It's working. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, and I'll say this too while we're, I mean, because this is just class, right? I mean, Amen. Uh, it's. It's, it's easy and we make it way too hard. Uh, it's not a great big long prayer. It's not what you say or not say or you got a well the pressure on us to say the right thing or pray the right thing or, or any of that. It's what you believe. It's believing does the, does the work. Amen. <clears throat> it's a believer. It said, those that believe in my name will lay hands on the sick and they recover. Right? So I just believe that. And so believing does the work. Not a big long prayer does the work. It's as easy as you see Jesus pray. Jesus actually never said go pray for the sick. Do you hear me? Jesus never told us to go pray for the sick. He said heal the sick. That's right. There's a difference. We're not begging God to show up and do something here. He's already done what he's done. And now we're going to believe that and know that we have the authority to agree with God and to do it. The... We haven't gotten and seen the results Jesus got because we've not done it the way Jesus did it. Jesus said, be healed. How easy and simple is that? Anybody can do that. You might say, I can't pray big, long, powerful prayers. You don't have to. Be healed is plenty good. Devil, get out is plenty good. Pain, get out of this body. Be whole, be healed, be free. Plenty good. All right? You don't have to be a rocket scientist. So uh, uh, we're teaching, I guess. So that's I'm all. Gonna, I'm going to add something to that. I'm going to add something to that. We're not called to run chase after people to pray for them. They came to Jesus. Only time he went to somebody else, somebody came to get him and drew him there. You see? What happens and what's happened in religion is they've expected us to run after everybody and these people don't even believe to begin with. They can't believe enough to get to church. They can't believe enough to, to, to open up their own Bible and, and read themselves. And they want that what they're looking for is, is, a, is a miracle worker, a, a witch doctor. And, and we're supposed to just lay hands. And it, it doesn't work that way. That's why I asked you to come down here. That's why I asked you to raise your hand who's looking for healing tonight and then come on down here. Why? Because it takes a little guts to get up out of the chair and come down. But you know what? Your, your desire overrode your guts. Amen? And that's just what happened in, in, the, in the areas with the disciples and with Jesus. Their, their, their need overrode their guts and they, they got up there and, 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 and received their healing. And you're going to receive your healing tonight also. You believe the moment we lay hands and make contact. I can't ask Pat to come up here. She's going to be the first one I work with. Won't you let Rachel come up with you and Rachel will be the first one you work with? Me. Hallelujah. Work with you. <laughs> no, that's that woman right there's got it. So, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tim, we're going to pray for you right now. No, I'm sorry, not next week. Next month, next month. I'm sorry. Next month. I, I kept saying next week. Next Monday. Ne ne next uh, next first of the month. Alright? Alright. I'm just I just picked one right here. I'm gonna pray for him. Alright? Go get him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you heard it. Amen. Turn these mics on. Nobody needs to hear anything.
Come here, Mr. Marilyn. You guys keep going. Don't let me disturb you. Miss Marilyn said, I just, I just know that there's faith born and, and testimony carries prophecy. And if it's available to some, it's available to all. So Miss Marilyn has uh, what you tell me, what you told me about your back and your head. Oh, well, about 10 years ago, I really pulled everything on this side. 10 of years? And it never has been right. But it feels right now. <laughs> and when you walked up here, you had pain. said Rachel laid hands on it we told the hip to be healed and the muscles to release and to be free and be right Amen. pain get out of her body it's that easy that's all we said wasn't it is that all we said she said it started popping and cracking now she don't have no pain
say this about what you just witnessed. Uh, besides his, besides his, there's no stronger voice in your own life than your own. Besides his, there's no stronger voice in your life than your own.
you get yours tonight? Who got theirs tonight? Next month, amen. And next month, let people know. Bring the sick folk. That's right. Bring the sick folk. Bring plenty of sick folk. We need all of you to bring a sick folk because you're going to be laying hands on them. Amen. That's right. We need one for everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for showing up. Hallelujah. Thank you. You took the pressure and you took it well. Hallelujah. All right. Good night. We love you. Thank you so much for